Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome to this HUD-8 networking tutorial. In fact, this is going to be a one-off module here. We're going to talk about access rules, but specifically, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a video that actually addresses a question I received uh, from Alexi, and hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, from Alexi here, and he is asking the question about the same security traffic permit inter interface. And what this command is all about is it deals with the scenario and the very likely scenario that in an enterprise environment, you would end up with more than one interface with the same security level. In fact, in the environment that I'm in, we have a production zone, which is equivalent to the inside zone with a security setting of 100. And then we have an admin zone, which is where we go to perform a lot of our administrative tasks and then launch from there uh, to other zones. And so both of those zones have a security setting of 100. And so this option right here, same security traffic, permit inter interface is basically saying that you're going to allow traffic from one zone that has a security level of a certain value to another, another interface, I should say, to another interface that has the security level that is the same value. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to baseline what the default is, because obviously this command is not applied by default. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through and we're going to get our answer to this question here. So, and he's asking if we add an ACL on the interface, uh, does it stop the, uh, the default behavior of permitting all traffic from a higher level security uh, zone to a less secure level, right? So we're going to talk about both of these cases here, and you can read my response here, and this was done for the MPF module that we did. So let's jump onto the command. Actually, before we jump onto the command line, so I've wiped the config on the router, and what we're going to be doing here is starting from scratch, but I'm not going to add in all of the, you know, the host name and the AAA. So we're just going to go straight for the interface configurations. Now remember, on a Cisco ASA 5505, we're talking about the switched virtual interfaces because it's under the SVI, the Layer 3 virtual interface on the ASA. That is where we declare the security level, right? So when I say interface, I'm not talking, and again, this is on the 5505, because it's different than the 5510, is different from the 5520, so forth and so on. So on the 5505, when I say interfaces with the same security level, I'm not talking about the physical interfaces. Now, undoubtedly, the physical interfaces are placed into or given access to the VLAN of which the SVI is a part of, but we're talking about those SVIs, right? Those switch virtual interfaces. So let's look, and I pre-drew this up here so we wouldn't have to uh, wade through this. And so this is what we're going to set up, and we're going to use all the default settings initially, right? So we've got our internal network here, right? The firewall is protecting us from the outside network where the ISP router resides. And this host is, uh, to, oops, sorry, I was going to write host again. It's uh, router one, right? And I just call it a host. It's going to act as a host. We're not doing any routing with it. We're just simply going to be using it to ping from and ping to. And that's going to sit in our DMZ. We're going to initially do a security level of 50. Because again, we want to see with the default modular policy framework and those default implicit rules, the access rules that we have, what is the functionality, right? What's going to happen if I change the DMZ from 50 to a security level of 100? And again, it, it's the DMZ. It could be anything. It could be your admin zone. It could be the 
backup network, you know, if you get your backup network hidden behind the firewall. It could be anything. So I'm just going to use DMZ uh, as the example here. And then we've got this iMac, and this is actually, we're going to get to see full screen, right? So you're not going to have to squint really hard to see what's going on. So this is the configuration, and let's go ahead and set this configuration up. So here we are on the ASA. Let's get into global config. No, we don't want to provide any uh, anonymous reporting information. So we're even going to stick with the base VLANs that we have. So first thing we're going to do, interface VLAN 1. Name if, we're going to say inside. It automatically sets the security level for us to 100. And we've seen this before. So let's add in our IP address. Now the inside, we're going to stick with that 10.0.0. 254 and make it a slash 24. You see we have a little pause right there. The SVI is instantiated. And now if I say show run interface VLAN 1, that's the configuration for VLAN 1. So now let's get into interface VLAN 2. And this is going to be our outside interface. So again, have to name the interface or else it's not going to come up. Sets the security level to zero for us. I'm going to add my IP address. Now remember, we're using DHCP and I'm going to say set route. So what does VLAN 2 look like? Now I don't need to do. Show run interface VLAN 2. So there's our outside interface. In other words, the big bad internet. Now let's add in interface VLAN 3. Name if DMZ. Now when I hit enter here, remember what are we going to see because of the fact that we have the base license applied? Exactly. We're going to be presented with the alert telling us, hey, you're configuring more than two interfaces with name if. So we have to put a no forward command in here. Now, one of the interesting things about this no forward command, and if you think about it, it really makes sense. The, the entire idea behind the base license, right, it limits us to three VLANs. So we've got VLANs one through three, we've got an inside zone, an outside zone, and it's going to let me create the DMZ. Now the question is, in a real environment, do you want traffic from your DMZ to, go, to be initiated from the DMZ and go into the inside network? Probably not. You don't want that traffic to be initiated from the DMZ. Now that doesn't mean, remember, the modular policy framework and the inspection engines. It doesn't mean that we can't go from the inside to the DMZ and look at a web page, right? You can certainly do that. It doesn't mean that we can't SSH into something in the DMZ. It means that I can't, um, I can't, it, when you, that no forward, it's that I can't initiate out of the DMZ into whatever, when I say no forward here, and I think it's interface, VLAN, and I have to pick the VLAN, right? So it makes sense. The whole concept of the base license makes sense because in the real world, chances are you don't want traffic initiating out of the DMZ coming into your, inst or coming, you know, uh, make sure I get my directionality right here, inbound, right, to the inside network. You don't want that. Right, That's why you place those things out in the DMZ, is so that if they get compromised, that it can't come back in. And so if you think about that base license concept that I've got to pick a VLAN here to say I'm not going to be initiating traffic from this DMZ into VLAN 1, which is my inside network, that makes sense. Because 99.999% of the time, that's what you're going to be doing. Now, there are certainly use cases where maybe you can make the argument, hey, no, I need to be able to connect. And if that's the case, then obviously the base license is not going to be a good solution. But remember, the pricing for the base license, used to, it's much cheaper than the advanced license, right? So, and again, when you're buying the base license, the expectation is that you don't need 11 interfaces and 11 different security zones, right? The idea behind the base license is, you know, small office, home office, maybe a small business, and you need inside, outside, right? And it gives you that flexibility to throw a DMZ in there and say, yeah, well, I'm going to put a web server in the DMZ, and oh, by the way, 
the web server is not going to be initiating traffic going into my production inside zone. So we say no interface. Now, even though I did the name if, it gave me an error message. So if I was to say show run interface VLAN 3, the name if is still not in there. We've got to get that on there. So uh, the name if DMZ, and you'll notice it sets it to zero by default. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say security level, and we're going to set it to 50 by default because we want to prove that with the default implicit access rules that we've seen before and the default, and we'll make a change to the MPF, we'll throw the inspect ICMP in there, that you can automatically, right, by default, go from a higher level security zone to a lower level security zone. And so again, we want to sort of create a baseline condition that we can prove, hey, it's working, and then we're going to manipulate things. Now, what do we need to do after this? We've got our VLANs, or I should say our SVIs are all set up and ready to go. So let's get into interface Ethernet 00. And we're going to say switch port access VLAN 2 because that is my outside interface. Now, if we come over here to router 1, which I'm not even sure what I was pinging there. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, I was pinging another IP. So let's ping, right, from router 1, let's ping the 209.165 dot, and you know what? I don't even know what the IP is going to be because we're doing DHCP. So let's come over here, <clears throat> excuse me, and we say no shut. Remember, the ports were all shut down by default. Show IP address. And so we end up with 209.165.253. And how are we getting that? What method are we receiving that address? It's DHCP. So back to router 1, ping 200.53. Do we have connectivity from the ISP? Right? No access rules applied. And let me make sure, was that 209, 165, 200.53? All right. So let me make sure, show run interface, no, make sure show run interface FA00. And I'm on the wrong router. I apologize. Uh, router 10 is connected to the DMZ. This is ISP. I should have picked up on that. And I think Cisco is the password. So there we go. So let's try it this way. Uh, 209.165.200.53. Because it should ping. There we go. And that was my expectation. And I was like, well, wait a second. I know I'm directly connected up here. So Router 1 is the host in the DMZ. This is the DMZ router. And so, so that we don't have that happen again, let me say DMZ router. R1. Whoops. R1. There we go. Much better. All right. So we've got Ethernet 00 taken care of. Interface Ethernet 01. I know that this is the inside interface, right? Or I should say that this is the inside zone, one of the interfaces in the inside zone on the ASA. So we say switch port access VLAN 1. Now again, that's the default, but a good habit to get into. And then we say no shut. Now, let's come to the Mac. And you can see here we're getting some different messages. And what were we pinging here? We're pinging something else. So let's come back over here and say 10.0.0.254. So can I ping the inside interface on the firewall. I can, right? And this is going to work. Because remember, the access rules as well as the modular policy framework, do they apply to traffic that is not transit traffic? No, they do not, right? It has to be transit traffic. This traffic is terminating at the ASA. It's ingressing into a single interface and that is its final destination. It never egresses out another interface. Therefore, it is not transit traffic, right? OK, so we can ping the inside interface. We can ping from the ISP. Let's take care of the final interface Ethernet 02, switch port access VLAN 3, no shut. And now I come back over here to router 1, and we say ping 172.16. Dot, and you know what? Did we not put an IP address? VLAN 3. Whoops, VLAN 3. Let's say show run interface VLAN 3. I think I left off 
the IP. I certainly did, and that would cause some issues. 16.1.254. And I am going to get the subnet mask in there. So now when we say show run interface VLAN 3, right, we're ready to rock here. So we come over here, 172.16.1.254. All right, so all three hosts can ping all can ping their respective ASA interface, right? We're pinging the IP address of the SVI. Remember, it's not the IP address of the port on the, the physical port on the back of the 5505 because those are layer two switch ports. We're able to ping the switched virtual interface, the layer three software interface that we've created. So what's the first thing we need to prove? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say do show run because I can never remember actually show run because I can't remember the name of the policy map. And then I know we've got the class and that's what we're looking for right there. So we're in global config and I'm going to grab policy map global underscore policy, say copy and paste. And we're going to say inspect ICMP. And the reason that we're doing this again is because we want to make sure that I can ping through the firewall, right, with transit traffic going from one zone to another zone. And we want to make sure that that's going to function. So, in fact, let's make sure that it didn't function initially, because I want to make sure you see that without that in there, here I am on uh, the iMac, right? And when I say ping 172.16.1.10, this is the IP address of the router host R1. So am I able to ping? Obviously not, right? ICMP, we're not getting any response. And actually, here's what I want to do. This is kind of, uh, or I shouldn't say kind of, it's very informative. If I say username Travis, password, and I'm doing this so we can get the HTTP server enable and HTTP uh, 10.0.0.0. 255.0 inside. Real quickly, I'm just enabling HTTP, creating a username, right? So let's pull up the ASDM. And this is, a, and I very rarely do I say this, but this is a, uh, a good opportunity or a good use case for ASDM in this kind of uh, sort of tut or tutorial environment here, because we're going to be able to see exactly what's going on. And I say Cisco, we say continue. All right, ASDM is going to fire right up here for us. And the size is already maxed out. And what we're interested in is right down here, this lower area, and I'm going to give us, I think we can do, is it going to let me do some more real estate? I'm going to say enable logging, right? And it's not going to allow me to make it any larger. But take a look here right? Connection attempt was prevented. And I want to I explain what it is you're seeing here, right? Because we're seeing that connections are being denied. Because remember, let's talk about what's happening right now. I have not enabled in the modular policy framework, we have not enabled inspect ICMP. So these messages right down here, which are saying connection attempt was prevented by no forward command. ICMP source was the DMZ router one host, and the destination is trying to get back to 10.0.0.11, which is the iMac. Now, it gives us the type and code, and this is an ICMP type 0 code 0 echo reply, right? But you're probably wondering, well, why don't I see an error message for the ICMP echo request, which would be a type 8 code 0? Why don't you see that? Well, remember, what is the default setting for access rules in MPF? So, We've got the inside host, right? We'll say, here's the Mac. Here's the firewall. And let's just, we'll deal with just the DMZ. And here's my DMZ R1, right? So the ping request comes 
here to the inside interface, security level 100, what is the first thing that the ASA is going to check? It's going to check to see, hey, do I have a connection object in my state slash connection table for this incoming packet? No, I don't. Then what does the ASA look at? Exactly. He looks at the access rules. And by default, the access rule is what? That statement that you saw in Alexi's question, which is all traffic from a higher level security interface is implicitly allowed to go to a lower level security interface. So we don't see any, you'll notice there's no errors here saying, oh, hey, uh, the ICMP packet, there, there was no connection thing here and it's been denied. It hasn't been denied because inbound, right, into the interface with the higher security level, we've got an implicit permit IP any any. And I can't, I'm not gonna pull that up right now in the GUI, because I want to stay right here. But that, remember, we saw that in the Module 7 video. But we get the errors here, and it's telling you what the problem is, is because now the DMZ is trying to send traffic back, right? And it's initiating. there Because remember, there's no... The ICMP is not stateful, is what I want to say, right? ICMP is by default, it's not stateful. There is no synchronize, there's no SYNAC, ACK, right? There's no three-way handshake, there's no sequence numbers. You know, it's not stateful. And so the DMZ is receiving, right? This router is receiving these pings. And it's trying to reply back to each of those pings. But because of this no forward option, we remember, we had to say, where do we not want traffic to originate, initiate from, and go to? And we said, DMZ is not allowed to initiate. Again, remember, initiate. And this is going to become important. It can't initiate traffic and send it over to the inside zone. And this is our default behavior. And so it's doing exactly what we would think it's going to do, right? So let's go ahead. Let's pull up the GUI. Or I'm sorry, not the GUI, the command line here. Let's pull the command line up and let's get into the service policy, global policy. And actually, I wanted all of this here. I'm sorry, the policy map, not the service policy, which is applied globally. But the policy map. And we're going to say inspect ICMP. So now we're actually going to be creating state information on the firewall, right? And so remember what we said, this is already running and each packet that's hitting, right? If I do control C, let's come back and reset here. Now take a look at what's happening. So you may be saying to yourself, and again, we're at default settings in terms of the access rules. And the modular policy framework has simply been set up to check to see does connection or is there a connection object in the connection slash state table for these ICMPs. And what I was going to say is you're probably sitting there saying, well, hold on just one second. You just told me that it can't initiate from the DMZ. So how is this working? And if we think about it, if you think about it, it makes sense. Let me refresh, right? And then let's watch and see. You'll see the session setup and the session tear down as soon as I click play. Here, click play. And oh, there it is. Okay, good. I, th ah, I thought I could get some more room out of this here. No, I think we're maxed out. Yeah, so let's go ahead and stop this for a second. Again, this is one of those instances where the GUI is actually of some good use because the ICMPs in the connection table, they're removed as soon as the ICMP reply is received. So it's like it's impossible for us to see it because it's happening so quickly. But in the GUI, right, we can see this information. And so now... It works. And again, if you think about it, it's this makes sense. So here's the Mac. 
Here's the ASA. And here is the DMZ host, right? So the ICMP packet comes in, the inside interface, right? And this would be considered outbound traffic flow coming inbound to the inside interface, right? Because outbound, because it's going from a higher level security zone to a lower level security zone. And the reason that this is working is that when the initial packet, and every packet with ICMP is the initial packet, again, remember, because it's not stateful by default, the ASA is creating that state information for us. So the first ICMP packet, or I should, it's, you know, again, it's each ICMP packet, I'll just say the first ICMP packet shows up, and the ASA says, hey, my modular policy framework has been adjusted. I now have an inspect ICMP under the policy map global underscore policy under the class map for the default. And I'm going to create on the ASA a connection object for that ICMP echo request. And so check that off. It creates that state information. And just like before, right, by default, where all the traffic from a higher level security zone is allowed to come into a lower level security zone, it gets to the router and the router generates an ICMP echo reply, right? Just like it did before, type zero, code zero. But now when it shows up to the ASA, what does the ASA check first? Exactly. Because that no, when it said no forward down here, that wasn't the router saying no forward, right? The router has no clue what the interface is set for up here. So the no forward was the ASA. So now when it shows up, the ASA has state information. It has a connection object. It's expecting a reply to come back for the ICMP echo request. And so we don't see no forward. What we see is what you see right down here. The source IP, we'll look at this entry right here, right? Source port zero, destination IP, there's the destination port because the source port was 5753. And it built an ICMP connection, right? You can see it's building the connection objects here, and then it's tearing the connection objects down. And of course, we got some denial here for 443, but we'll ignore that for now. But again, you can see build outbound ICMP connection, and then tear it down. As soon as it gets the reply back right here, it tears it down. And then 10 is the source of the ping over to the DMZ host. So quickly, build an outbound ICMP connection for this guy. And again, there it is right there, proving, I'm not making those terms up, build the outbound connection because we're going from a higher level security interface to a lower level security interface. So traffic flow is described as outbound. And then it tears it down. And you can see it's doing it again, right? It's all that information is taking place uh, right down here, right? You can see the teardowns going on. And there's some other traffic because there's other traffic being generated. But that is what we're interested in right there. And that is why I said earlier, right, the base license, it makes sense. Because if I had, let's say, hanging off of this router, we had some HTTP servers. These are TCP. Modular policy framework, does it inspect TCP by default? Yes, it does. So if I was in the inside zone over here on this Mac, right, and the Mac needed to you know, view what was on the web server, I could still have the base license and the Mac would be able to initiate the connection to the web server via port 80, which is TCP and it's being inspected. And so therefore, the return flow is allowed because we've got a connection object. And so this was kind of, and very rarely do I say this, the genius behind the Cisco licensing approach on this is that, you know, small office, home office, bit small business, this would work, right? This is a viable solution with the base license. 
because you and again you can we don't have the no forward between the DMZ and the outside interface so you know everything is fine there but from the inside we can still hit HTTP what we're protecting ourselves against and what we illustrated with the ICMP before we inspected it is that from the DMZ you cannot initiate right you cannot initiate the connection into the zone that we declared, or I should say, into the interface, which is the SVI that we declared in that no forward command. All right. So again, I want to make sure that we comprehensively cover this and that I, you know, we inductively walk through it so that you can sort of see each and every step as it gets set up. So now let's move into Alexi's question, right, and kind of focus more on that. So we can see what the default is. We're inspecting ICMP, and we can ping, right? But if I come over here to router 1, which is in the DMZ, and it's the DMZ router, can I ping 10.0.0.11? Why is that not working? Yeah, exactly, because this is the DMZ host initiating the traffic. The firewall gets it, looks at it, and says, yeah, uh, sorry, not going to happen. I have no connection object for you. And by default, you are a lower level security interface, coming in on a lower level security interface, the DMZ security level 50, the traffic is not going to be allowed through. But from the inside, it is. We're inspecting it, so we're good. Now, what if we're on the ASA and we want to baseline this? So there's a com oops, sorry, there's a command where I can say same security traffic permit enter interface, which means if I have hosts that are in security zones with the same security level, that they should be able to talk to each other. Before we set that, let's do this. Let's change the DMZ. So I'm going to go into interface VLAN 3, and I'm going to say security level 100. So let's come over here to this host here. And interesting, take a look at what's happening. And maybe you're thinking, well, hold on, Travis. All you have to do is do a control C and then kick it off again, and everything's going to work. No, because now that the two security zones have the same security level, this answers the first question, which is, by default, with only the ICMP change to the modular policy framework, by default, with the implicit access rules, is traffic allowed from a security zone with the same security level into the other, the other uh, zone that has the matching security level. So in other words, two zones with the same security level, by default, can they communicate with each other? Is all traffic allowed? And I think this answers our question. The answer is no. And in fact, when we look over here, if I say show run include same, it is not permitted by default. So by default, without any ACLs and without any modifications, with the exception of we're inspecting ICMP and we're just doing that so that we can uh, so that we can demo things, right? So by default, traffic between security zones with the same security level is not permitted right? It's not permitted. Now, we don't have any access rules in play yet, but let's go ahead and take this to its logical conclusion. So you're saying, okay, well, it's not permitted by default, but what about that command that you just showed us up there, right? Same security traffic permit, enter, interface. So now when I enter this command on the ASA, what I'm saying is, is that they have the they have an equal amount of trustworthiness, right? Because that really the security level, that number that we're using, whoops, this number that we're using here is sort of like, you know, when people say, look, oh, on a scale of one to 10, right? So think of it like this, on a scale of one to 100, how trustworthy 
is this interface. And remember, when I'm saying interface, I'm not talking about the physical interface on the 5505. For the 5510 and the other models, it would be the interface. But with the 5505, we're talking about that switched virtual interface, that layer 3 software interface. And so what we're saying here is that both VLAN 1 and VLAN 3 share the same amount of trustworthiness on that scale of 1 to 100, or I should say from 0 to 100, technically. So from 0 to 100, with 0 being the least trustworthy and 100 being the most trustworthy. And so the use case for this is you want to put your administrative machines, right? Maybe you got jump servers or... Uh, you know, remote desktop servers or something like that. And you do, obviously you don't want those on your sitting on a, a production segment, right, where maybe you've got production servers of some different kind. So you want to segregate those out. So let's go ahead. Same security traffic permit inter interface. Well, look at that. So now this works. Now remember, this is going from the inside zone to the DMZ. But if everything I've just told you is true about this command and the fact that the security level in the DMZ is now 100, what does that mean when I come over here, and we'll throw a big repeat on here with a huge number, what is that going to mean here? Because now the DMZ is no longer a lower level security interface. It's equal to the inside zone. So what's going to happen? Why is it not working? Why do you think it's not working? Because the security levels are the same. So what would prevent this from working? Let's do control shift six. So if we go back and we take a look and we say, show run, and we're going to come down. You can see that we've got security level 100 here. We've got security level 100 here. So why is it that from, oh, you know what, and let me check something, show IP route real quick. Okay, so we do have the static route. I wanted to make sure that we had the static route uh, in here telling it to get to the network. So why would it be that from the DMZ with a security level of 100 that it can't get to the inside zone. And remember, we've got the same security level, right? We have that setting on the firewall, same security traffic permit in our interface. So why is this not working? Exactly. I want to give you a little pause there to think about it because the answer is right here. The answer is here on the screen. Yeah, it's the no forward, right? Because remember, and this is a base license uh, corner case type thing, right? Where we've got to say no forward. And what does that no forward mean? It doesn't mean that it can't send ICMP echo replies when there's a connection object and information in the connection table, that's going to work. But when I try to initiate the traffic, right, we've got the no forward clause on there. And so, again, this is kind of instructive here. If I come back, let's pull the GUI up and see what the GUI says. I'm going to refresh here, and the GUI is going to give us some information. And let me kick this off. And what should we see? Yeah, we should see the exact same thing that we saw earlier. So let's do this to prove that with the defaults, and I'm going to take the no, I'm not going to take the no forward out of the equation. I have to keep it on that interface. It's required for me to keep it on the interface. But let's change it and point it to the outside interface. Let's make it so that by default, it would be able to forward to the inside zone. So let's get an interface VLAN 3, and I'm going to say no forward VLAN 2. Now, when I hit this and I come back over here, 
whoops, and I'm sorry, I wanted to say interface, VLAN 2, only one no forward. Let's see how we're going to have to do this. Uh, let's do a show run interface, VLAN 3. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, I'm going to, we're going to remove VLAN 3. So I'm going to say no interface VLAN 3. And then we're going to say interface VLAN 3. We're going to say no forward to interface VLAN 2. And then we're going to say uh, name if DMZ. We're going to have to change the security level to 100 and then IP address 172.16.1.254. All right, so now the DMZ should be in great shape, right? So it was the no forward command that was preventing me because I was initiating the traffic, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to come back over here to the ASA. And now let's talk about the second part of Alexi's, Alexi's question. So remember... By default, as soon as I put that same security level command in there and permit the inter-interface exchange of traffic, I can forward back and forth, right, to interfaces that have the same security level. By default, it, that does not work with the same security level. You have to put that same security level command in there in order to get that to work between interfaces. And on the 5505, we're talking about SVIs with the same security level setting. So that's been sorted out, and so I'm gonna to have to do this again. No interface VLAN three, and then I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna do a quick cut and paste right here, and that is what we're looking for. All right, so we've got the DMZ set back, and I'm gonna say the one thing we do need to change is the security level, and we'll set it to 50. Right, So now if I come back over to router 1, the security level is not the same, and so what's the result? Yeah, it's going to be a whole bunch of nothing. Right, It's not working. Let's come back over to the inside iMac, who is working spectacularly. Right, So now we transition to the second question that Alexi had. Let me actually stop. Well, I'll leave that running. We'll leave that going. And his question was, and let's pull it up. I want to make sure we capture the question correctly here. So the question was, very interesting. What about same security traffic permit interface? If we add ACLs on the interface, does it stop the rule, permit all traffic, or is this going to work? Right? Now, remember what we said. When we put the ACL on, the default access rule, that implicit access rule behavior disappears, and it disappears on the interface, and I want to make sure I'm clear about this. You can see my response down here, right? I put the all caps in here to stress that it's going to be on the interface on which you put the ACL. So other interfaces, if you didn't put ACLs, which is unlikely that you're going to do that, again, and I'll call it the most common practice, is on your ASA, it's going to be minimum access. Every interface should have an inbound ACL on every interface at a minimum permitting the traffic that you want to allow, right? And that provides minimum access, and that's the most common practice with the ASA. So to Alexi's point, let's go ahead and do this. Let's put ACLs, and here let me go back to the command line. And so now let's create an ACL. So we'll say access list. And I'm going to say inside in, right, for the inside zone. And extended, and we're going to permit. And what are we going to permit here? So first, let me put an ACL on here that does not permit. So we'll say permit TCP from anybody on the inside zone to any other zone, right? And I'll say equal to 80. So it'll be HTTP. And in fact, on router one here, control shift six, let me real quickly do this username, Travis, password, Cisco, and then uh, what is it? IP HTTP enable? No, IP HTTP server. Yeah. So let's turn the HTTP server on here and let's find out, 
right? We'll see, we'll check the pings and then we'll check the TCP. So we're gonna add that ACL, right? This access rule, and we're gonna add it to access group inside dash in, uh, in the inbound direction on the interface inside. Now, as soon as I hit enter, right? And if I was to be over here, you can see these pings are just chugging along just beautifully, right? As soon as I hit enter, the ACL, the implicit behavior of those, or I should say the behavior of those implicit ACLs, which state that all traffic from a higher level security zone can go to a lower level security zone are done on the inside interface. And this is important, right? It's done. It's no longer going to function on the inside interface. Because take a look here. Is all traffic from the higher level inside MacBook being allowed to go into the DMZ, which has a security level of 50, which is lower? And the answer is no, right? And again, it's because we applied it here on the inbound interface, right? So the answer is it clearly breaks the default behavior. But let me check and see. Let's check and see. I'm on this MacBook here, and uh, I think we have a, a browser up. And if I was to go to, uh, what is it, 172.16, let's check the HTTP, and let's see, does that work? 172.16.1.16. 10. Looking promising. And we'll give it a second here. And it didn't like my password. Travis and Cisco is I thought what I used. Okay, so clearly having issues with the browser, but we're getting the HTTP connection, right? We're getting the connection. So HTTP is being allowed through. And we can just kill that off. HTTP is being allowed through. It's the ICMP that's not working. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's change the security level to 100. And let's see if setting the security level to 100 is going to change things or make things any different. So no interface VLAN 3. And then uh, interface VLAN 3. We're going to say uh, no forward interface VLAN. And actually, I could have just changed. I apologize. I could have just changed the security level there. Uh, interface VLAN 1, name if DMZ. Uh, we'll set the security level to 100. IP address 172.16.1.254 slash 24. Right? And we'll kill this and restart it. They're the same. Now, so now this is important, right? Because the ACL is clearly, clearly taking precedence over what? It's taking precedence over show run interface VLAN, or no, show run uh, include same. It's clearly taking precedence over same security traffic permit in our interface. The moment that we place that ACL, as an access group statement onto the inside interface in the inbound direction, the default behavior of all traffic from a higher level security zone is allowed into a lower level security zone on that inside interface on which we place the ACL, it is done, right? It's over with, it's no more. And I'm gonna prove that right now, if we were to uh, take this and let me see if this is going to be, and actually we, I'm thinking about pulling off the access group of the inside and putting it on the outside, but here's what I want to do instead. So let's do this, right? You can see that all traffic is not allowed. So what do I have to do now? Again, minimum access. So let's adjust inside in extended permit ICMP. And remember, we're talking about the inbound direction, or I should say, in the inbound direction on the inside interface, right? Which is different than describing the traffic flow. The traffic flow is still described as 
outbound because it's outbound from a higher level security zone to a lower level security zone. And actually, we changed it to 100 here. We've got the, uh, I think the DMZ is set to 100. So it's no longer lower. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to permit it from anybody on the inside zone to uh, 172.16. We'll pin it down here to, and actually, let's not even do that. We'll just say to anybody. You can ping from any, anybody to anybody, right? And as soon as I do that, take a look at what happens. Because once I place the ACL on the interface, it doesn't matter that I have same security traffic permit enter interface because with the default settings, that's when that mattered. Here, it didn't matter. It's the ACL that matters. And now we have connection objects being created. And so router one, who is do debug IP packet, who is receiving all of these echo replies and responding. And let me see if I'm going to lose control here. I think I may do you all. I'll try to kill it early on. Do you all. Okay, whew, cool. All right. So all of this ICMP traffic that's flowing back and forth, right, it's now responding and sending packets back, right? Source of 10 going to 11, okay? So it's working. And they have the same security level, show run interface VLAN 1, show run, I'm sorry, show run interface VLAN 3. They have the same security level. So let's make sure that that's the case. Let's do this. Let's remove and say no same security level traffic permit inner interface. And we're going to take that off. Because remember, with all the default settings, the default is that inter-interface traffic from same security level zones is not permitted. I had to put this on here. So let's find out if you have to put this on here when applying the ACLs that break those implicit everything from the higher level to the lower level is allowed. Let's see what happens. And there you have it, right? So we have to have that on irrespective, right? And what that means is we have to have same security level permit inner interface has to be on whether you're using the default settings or the ACLs, right? In order to pass traffic between two zones that have the same security level. And so that actually answers Alexi's second question, the, st the second part of his question, which is, uh, if we add an ACL on the interface, it stops this rule, permit all traffic from a higher level security to a less security level. The answer is yes. We saw that it broke it. Because remember, what is allowing that statement right there to be true? the implicit access rules that we get by default. That makes that statement right there, permit all traffic from the higher level security zone to the lower level security zone. It's the default implicit access rules that are on the ASA before we put any ACLs on. And so let's go ahead and review real quickly here what we've talked about, right? So we saw that by default, all traffic from the higher level is allowed to the lower level, right? We flipped the inspect on, but it would have worked with HTTP uh, right out of the gate. And we also saw that when we changed the security levels to be the same, we had to put the same security traffic permit in our interface on with the default settings in order to get that to work. And with the default implicit access rules, it worked great. Then what we did was we turned around and we put an ACL on the inside interface, breaking or removing from the inside interface that implicit characteristic. So now it's no longer all traffic is allowed from a higher level security interface 
specifically the inside, it's only the traffic that the ACL, which is applied to that inside interface, it's only the traffic that that ACL is allowing into the inside interface, that is all that's being allowed or permitted to go somewhere else into another zone or out the outside interface. That's what's permitting it. And then we adjusted the DMZ security level back to 100 and saw that even with the security zones the same, and even with an ACL breaking the implicit permit all traffic from a higher level to a lower level, right? We have to have the same security traffic permit inner interface when ACLs are applied to the interfaces where the traffic is originating. And I'm calling that out because you didn't see me put an ACL on the DMZ interface, right? But let's do what would typically be considered best practice, right? As I would say, access list, let me type this up here real quick. I would say access list outside in, and uh, it's already got a deny any any on there, but if I wanted to, you know, log it or do something more with it, let's say outside in extended, deny any any, or deny IP, sorry. Deny IP any any. Right, And then we'll do access list, because remember, this is coming into the outside interface, right? So I don't want anybody from the internet being able to initiate, originate connectivity through my outside interface. And in the DMZ, it's going to be a little different. DMZ in, and let's go ahead and say, and what are we going to do here? So inbound, and we could do much the same, but let me do this. Let me permit... Uh, ICMP from anybody to anybody, and we'll leave it at that, right? So I would say access group, DMZ in, whoops, DMZ in, in the inbound direction on interface outside, right? And I would say access group, uh, oh, wait, <laughs> did you see what I just did there? I put the DMZ ACL on the outside interface when what I wanted to say was interface DMZ, and then we're going to say access group outside in, right? So the only thing being permitted, remember, we've got implicit deny any's at the end of ACLs, right? So the DMZ, so from the hosts in the DMZ, the only traffic they're allowed to initiate is ICMP, right? They're not allowed to initiate anything else. But if there's a connection object for HTTP traffic, because this is where we've got our, you know, our web Outlook, our Outlook web interface, or, you know, we're hosting websites or whatever, that stuff is still going to function, right? It's still going to function. And uh, this, right, it's not going to function from the outside because we're literally blocking everything right now. So, again, this is typically what would happen. So if I said show run access group, Right? We could see that, oh, okay, so he's got these access rules applied to these interfaces in this direction, in the inbound direction. So what do you think is going to happen if I come over here to router 1 in the DMZ and I say do ping 10.0.0.11? What's going to happen? Well, we just put an ACL on there, so why isn't it working? And remember, we've seen this, right? So it's the no forward clause that we have in there. That's the problem. Okay, so that is what you would typically do, right? The most common use case or the most common case would be to apply inbound ACLs on each of the ASA interfaces, ensuring that the traffic is, traffic is inspected only one time. And then that state information gets created. You can see the ACLs haven't impacted anything going on over here, right? We're still able to ping, and now... We are good. All right. So we talked about quite a bit in this tutorial. Hopefully, this has cleared up any confusion. And I know it's ex it can be extremely confusing trying to figure out, well, same traffic and, and they've got the same security level. And, you know, now we've got this no forward thing going on here. And so we looked at all of that. And it should be hopefully clear 
as to how the ASA is going to behave, specifically the 5505, with the base license uh, when we start to add ACLs to interfaces and we've got that, uh, that same security um, level permit traffic, inner interface traffic command. All right, well, that is going to wrap up this tutorial answering Alexi's question. Again, I thought it would be better to do up a quick video, although this ran for a little while. But again, we want to test it, lab it up, and see what is the behavior? What is it going to do? All right, thank you so much for watching. Again, we'll be doing AAA and DHCP, I promise, tomorrow. We're going to be done and fully configured by the weekend. All right. Have a great night. I really appreciate your time. I hope that this was worth it. And I hope to see you in Module 8. Have a great night.